Hello! A tired Hakim has decided to laugh at some more PragerU nonsense today rather than the planned and almost complete generic Socialism Explained video intended for today. For some reason, I always assume I'll have fun looking at this stuff, but I just honestly torture myself. The video I've decided to take a look at today is Why I Left the Left, ooh, what a nifty little title, in which Dave Rubin, a former Young Turks pundit turned conservative grifter, talks about how he became disillusioned with liberals because they were too nice to brown people or something. Scratch a liberal, blah blah. Now a libertarian of sorts, he endorsed Trump because he stood up to the woke left and the uh, evil commies running all the universities. He is also on record claiming that there is no significant racism in the United States, which is... yeah. Other yikes takes include Arabs and Jews in Israel have the same rights. His uh, support through platforming of people like Stephen Molyneux, who always kind of struck me as some sort of discount Bioshock villain, but is that just me? Uh, Lauren Southern, Tommy Robinson, and other nobodies who've built careers on nitpicking statistics and being allergic to ethnic food. He's also a purveyor of the left can't meme idiocy, uh, of course, coming from a group that has two jokes, attack helicopter and whatever the fuck Ben Garrison does. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what am I even looking at? Now, just before we start, I'd like to show you the thumbnail. Uh, I honestly don't know why I find this so funny, but the fact that he seems to be so upset about a coexist and peace sign just tickles me a bit. Strange depiction of the left aside, I thought we're all simultaneously white college students, soy boys, while at the same time somehow being Antifa super soldiers capable of tearing down the foundations of Western civilization, which, based, by the way. Let's see what he has to say. Do you believe in free speech? No, I don't. Do you believe that people should be judged by their character, not their skin color? Oh god, he's gonna go down the white people are oppressed line, isn't he? Do you believe in freedom of religion? For sure, more than you do. If you believe these things, you're probably not a progressive. <laughs> All right, let's, let's read between the lines here. Uh, freedom of speech by these types is usually a proxy for saying racist, misogynist, or otherwise hateful nonsense without consequence. If he really believed in freedom of speech, he wouldn't be so against pro-Palestine talk and his lovely claim that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Yeah, try to wrap your head around that brain rot. Which is it, Dave? As usual, it's a freedom for me, not for these sort of deal. A bunch of idiots have said some problematic shit that pushes racist agendas, and after finally seeing some pushback, all they can do is cry about being cancelled. Funny how we're supposed to be the snowflakes. As for the character, not color of skin stuff, more disingenuous and nonsense, of course, I'll bet my ass he's gonna turn this into a people don't like me because I'm white rant. The last thing, well, he seems to like freedom of religion, just not for Muslims. Hilariously, that's part of the reason he stopped being Mr. Progressive, because liberals were too fake nice to the browns. This isn't even touching on whatever being a progressive means, which is its own can of worms at this point. You might think you're a progressive. I used to think I was. My show, The Rubin Report, was originally part of the Progressive Young Turks network. Progressives struck me as liberals, but louder. Progressives were the nice guys. They looked out for the little guy. They cared about women and minorities. They embraced change. In short, who wouldn't want to be a progressive? But over the last couple of years, the meaning of the word progressive has changed. Progressives used to say, I may disagree with what you say, but I'll fight to the death for your right to say it. Basically a roundabout way of saying liberal, really. By the way, that's a stupid as fuck idea and has never really been applied by liberals, except to their darlings on the right. Uh, firstly, you shouldn't defend anyone's quote unquote right to be racist through speech, for example. Secondly, historically liberals worked tooth and nail to defend the rights of fascists talking, but never hesitated to censor and harass communists into the ground. Pretty much every Latin American country and European social democracy has had an episode of this kind over the 20th century. Not anymore. Banning speakers whose opinions you don't agree with from college campuses, that's not progressive. Like how Parenti was never allowed to speak at campuses because he was a socialist, or Kwamature, or dozens of other leftist speakers that actually had something worthwhile to say aside from the gays are coming for your Xbox, and blacks, crime, 69% pee pee poo poo, I'm very smart. Yeah. Prohibiting any words not approved of as politically correct, that's not progressive. I can't say the n-word anymore. <laughs> I'm actually not sure what this is supposed to mean. I've never seen any overarching change to word usage anywhere. Uh, I mean, actual mistakes have been corrected. For example, people used to say Mohammedan instead of Muslim, uh, but I doubt that's what he's referring to. Is this an American thing? I don't know, let me know in the comments because I'm sure I'm missing something. Putting trigger warnings on books, movies, music, anything that might offend people, that's not progressive either. What if someone is actually diagnosed with PTSD and would be made uncomfortable by being exposed to that piece of media? Why is this a bad thing? I would, in a way, a conservative mind would understand. 
Military veterans might appreciate trigger warnings on explosive or otherwise action simulation noise in media as it can elicit PTSD in relation to their time in service. You've probably seen countless images of American soldiers kneeling over in terror because some fireworks are going off or something. PTSD is a real thing, and the difference being rape victims, for example, are actually victims, while American soldiers are servants of empire that went abroad to murder innocents so that Lockheed Martin executives can see a line go up, whether they knew it or not. Believe it or not, there is research on the effects of trigger warnings, and they can be criticized from a scientific angle, but you're not doing that. You're trying to do some fake macho thing of, my kids today are too soft. Of course, coming from someone that begins screeching because the next James Bond might be black or something. All of this has led me to believe that much of the left is no longer progressive, but regressive. This is one of the reasons I've spent so much time on my show talking about the regressive left. Um, isn't it you guys that are trying to take away the right to abortion? You are on PragerU, man. At least pretend to be consistent. Regardless, his issue is with liberals, not the left. In case you're new here, liberals are not leftists. This regressive ideology doesn't judge people as individuals, but as a collective. <laughs> no, that's, that's it. <laughs> I have nothing else to add. If you're black or female or Muslim or Hispanic or member of any other minority group, you're judged differently than the most evil of all things, a white Christian male. And there it is. Habibi, if that really were true, why are these oh-so-oppressed white Christian males receiving lower sentences than minorities for equivalent crimes? Why are white men earning more than minorities within the same field and level of education? Loan applications, schooling opportunities, jobs, practically every level of society, white men, and white people in general, are privileged in choice over minority men who are equivalent to them in all but skin color. By the way, no one here is attacking anyone for being a white man. This is just an attempt at finally treating them like everyone else. An attempt that has yielded very little success, I might add. How does that old line go? Equality to the privileged seems like oppression. Also, I think these people took the jokes too seriously. White America literally enslaved Africans for centuries, and to this day continues to systematically discriminate against them. Yet I've heard several times from prominent figures, as well as everyday white people, that blacks should get over it by now. In comparison, maybe within the last decade, probably less, there have been a few jokes about, I don't know, lack of seasoning and punching drywall, which result in seething and frothing at the mouth because, I don't know, Todd felt an affront to his masculinity to use paprika or some shit, and didn't like to be called out on it, of course. And I reiterate, apparently minorities are the snowflakes, hmm? The regressive left ranks minority groups in a pecking order to compete in a kind of oppression Olympics. Gold medal goes to the most offended. And you putting whites at the finish line isn't contributing to that. I agree the idea is stupid, but again, liberals generally love flashy stuff that has no substance, so I'm not surprised that this is what they do. Rather than fix the systemic bias of prisons and judges against African Americans, they'd rather have a black cop, judge, and prison warden. Again, his issues are with liberals, not socialism or anything actually left. Who am I kidding? The overtone window in the US is so far right that loosely saying people should have healthcare makes you look like Stalin, apparently. Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream that his children would be judged by their character and not their skin color was a liberal idea, but these days it's not a progressive ideal. Oh boy, a conservative quoting Martin Luther King, a noted socialist and vocal anti-capitalist that was encouraged by the FBI to kill himself. Hmm, are you ready for me to bust out some Lenin? Let's bust out some Lenin. What is now happening to Marxist theory, or Martin Luther King in this case, has, in the course of history, happened repeatedly to the theories of revolutionary thinkers and leaders of oppressed classes fighting for emancipation. During the lifetimes of great revolutionaries, the oppressing classes constantly hounded them, received their theories with the most savage malice, the most furious hatred, and the most unscrupulous campaigns of lies and slander. After their death, attempts are made to convert them into harmless icons, to canonize them, so to say, and to hallow their names to a certain extent for the consolation of the oppressed classes and with the object of duping the latter, while at the same time robbing the revolutionary theory of its substance, blunting its revolutionary edge and vulgarizing it. Man, he really never misses, huh? God, I'd love Lenin. There's really nothing more to add here. If Martin Luther King was alive today, you'd be deriding him as a member of the regressive left. So kindly fuck off. And what about religious freedom, the idea that no one else can tell you what you have to believe? Surely progressives still support that basic right. Let me guess, Christians, still the believing majority within the US, are somehow oppressed. Liberals are too nice to Muslims. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be that, isn't it? Well, not so much. I'm a married gay man, so you might think that I appreciate the government forcing a Christian baker or photographer or florist to act against their religion in order to cater, photograph, or decorate my wedding. 
but you'd be wrong. A government that can force Christians to violate their conscience can force me to violate mine. Uh, this is why I really don't like these types. He drops the fact that he's gay only to suit an agenda. As always, they'll always get a demographic appropriate guest to say their shit for them. It'd be neat if it wasn't so transparent. If a baker won't bake you a cake, find another baker. Don't demand that the state tell him what to do with his private business. This gets annoying in the discussion because we'll have to get into anti-discrimination laws. A baker that denies gays can deny blacks or Native Americans or Jews. Slippery slope, blah, blah, I'm not in the mood for this conversation, but safe to say uh, this is an ideological inconsistency for this guy. I'm pro-choice, but a government that can force a group of Catholic nuns, literally called the Little Sisters of the Poor, to violate their faith and pay for abortion-inducing birth control. Oh, okay. Stop. Just stop. Firstly, this is complaining about the contraceptive mandate in the US, which basically means that insurers and employers have to provide coverage for contraceptives, an objectively good thing. Out of 18 methods of contraception, the law requires that at least one is covered, and absolutely none of these are abortion-inducing birth control, which is incredibly vague, by the way. I'm a physician. I look through the list. Absolutely none of them are abortion-inducing. The only way to justify this is to somehow suggest that the Plan B pill is abortion-inducing, in which he would reveal himself to be either absolutely ignorant of the legal definition of abortion or of medicine, most probably both. The point of Plan B is to prevent fertilization in the first place, not to abort an implanted embryo. This is an objective falsehood he's spreading. He's literally lying. There's no way around this. Can force anyone to do anything. That's not progressive, that's regressive. The only thing regressive here is your understanding of embryology, have you? Today's progressivism has become a faux moral movement hurling charges of racism, bigotry, xenophobia, homophobia, Islamophobia, and a slew of other meaningless buzzwords at anyone they disagree with. But what if said person was actually being racist or sexist, etc.? By the way, you hurl anti-Semite against everyone even remotely critical of Israel, including practicing Jews. You're also guilty of the same tactics of the regressive left. The battle of ideas has been replaced by a battle of feelings, and outrage has replaced honesty. <laughs> you could have replaced this little phrase with 10 seconds of uncut diarrhea, and pretty much the same amount of content would have been delivered, honestly. Diversity reigns supreme as long as it's not that pesky diversity of thought. My guy, what are you on about? If you could have your way, you'd most definitely limit, if not outright completely eliminate, the reach of socialist discourse, which is what all your ilk wants. You don't give three shits about diversity of thought, you just want diversity in being a cunt. Of course, without consequences. This isn't the recipe for a free society, it's a recipe for authoritarianism. And he blames us for buzzwords. For these reasons, I can no longer call myself a progressive. I don't really call myself a democrat either. I'm a classical liberal. Liberal is enough. By the way, yeah, we noticed. A free thinker. <laughs> yeah, whatever you tell yourself at night, Harvey. And as much as I don't like to admit it, defending my liberal values has suddenly become a conservative position. Yes, yes, conservatives are the voice of reason. That's why we should defund homeless shelters and cut taxes on the rich. The money will trickle down any second now, and while we're at it, let's bomb a place most Americans can't point on a map. By the way, this is an indictment of Democrat types too. You're all liberals. So if you think people should be able to say what they think without being punished for it, that people should be judged by their behavior, not their skin color, and that people should be able to live the way that they want to live without government interference, brought to you from the side of increase the funding for the police and, you know, we haven't been in enough wars yet. Big government is a fairy to conservatives. It exists when you're not allowed to profile blacks, but doesn't exist when you want the war machine to rev up again. Then there's not much left on the left for you. I'll keep trying to explain that to progressives until I'm totally left out. I'm Dave Rubin of The Rubin Report for Prager University. Thank you, Dave. This has been a thoroughly unpleasant experience. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. To help keep our videos free, donate here. Is it just me or does Dennis always sound like he smells like dust and really bad coffee? He's like the shitty grandpa that always brings the bitter candy that sat out on a windowsill for like six years. You know, the chocolate where the fat has separated. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And that's it for today. I'm sorry that I subjected you to this garbage, but it was fun enough to laugh at. Evermore Prager you garbage as always. If you enjoy what I do, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help. I'd like to thank my patrons, so thank you too. Crack Up, Chance Benham, Nikide Said, Seth Potter, Alice Guo, Baman Dashti, Jake Chateau, Ruben Halcro, Riley Navarra, Demonic Vice Praising Elmo, Snitch Stand, Duncan Shistholm, Matthew Bledsoe, 
Isaiah Miller, Ella Nancy, Blue Basil, Anthony, Dylan Engholm, Tracy Wang, Carl Eric Patrick Iwerson, Jay, Sivert Klepe Bringot, hum 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 hum, <laughs> Oliver, Alistair A.G., Kalina Iha, Del Sebold, Henry Tang, Evi Ren, Yannick, Gom Goblin, Justin Monolith, Vyman NG, Secrets, Secret Asia Dan, Jake, Louis Jet, Topsy, Levi Rigsby, Claudia Mushell, Jordan Craw, ML1822, Fabian Zanger, Matt C, Skylar Magnum Turner, Rebecca, Zezane, ABR Soviet, The Paltism, Cameron Collins, Fidel Marxlin, Benko Inc., Taylor Bordeaux, Jim Ritchie, Paul Zam, Jonathan and James, Scott Red Hank, and Shinatsu. Thanks for watching.